By using an old-fashioned stick-to-itiveness, a group of working moms created a niche business and tapped into the multi-billion dollar global label market, which is expected to reach, get this, more than $43 billion by the year 2020. Their unconventional struggle from startup to brand name on tonight's How I Made My Millions. That was Mabel's labels he was talking about. And today, we're hanging out with one of its founders, Julie Cole. Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Jessica, and this is She's on Top. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell button. That way you'll get notifications of all of our videos. Also, hit the like and give us a thumbs up and make sure to leave a comment because we want your feedback. Julie Cole was working as a lawyer when her first child was diagnosed with autism. She decided to stay home, take care of the therapy and became an accidental entrepreneur. Julie, along with her three partners, founded Mabel's Labels. They started off in their basement and over a decade grew it into a multi-million dollar business. In this video, Julie talks about the importance of PR, having a personal brand, and working with celebrities. She also talks about the rising power of micro-influencers and why she prefers to work with them. And finally, she tells us about the one thing you must do in order to be successful. Mabel's labels came about because we noticed a product missing from the market. I was not actually going through life thinking, oh, one day I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to start my own business. I was thinking that I would be a family law lawyer working for a women's service or legal aid. That's what I thought my life would look like. Um, so for me, really, it was a fact that entrepreneurialism kind of found me with the changing needs of my family and with a great product idea. So Mabel's Labels was founded by four women. I'm just one of them. And actually it's a it's such a funny group. So one is my sister Cynthia and then we had two friends that we went to university with Julie Ellis and Trisha Mumby. And in fact they ended up getting married to our brother and our young uncle <laughs> that they met through us. So at the end of the day it is a family family business. Um, so having four partners can be pretty tricky, um, but lots of fun. And there was a lot of, like in those early days, I think what really helped us move the business at a, at a faster pace and to grow at a faster rate was that there were four of us because we could divide and conquer. We are a web-based business, all e-commerce, and our bread and butter is about mom or dad going online to mableslabels.com entering in their kid's name on the label they want, picking the little cute icon and their color choice, hitting send, and then we make the labels right here in our facility and send them out 24 hours later. So that is really, that is how we make our money. Mabel's Labels started in my sister's basement with the four of us working a couple nights a week making labels. Eventually we got to the point where we needed to hire somebody. So we did hire somebody and we were in this really terrible grungy basement. And that's gotta be, gosh, 12 years ago now. And we moved to where we are now, which is a 14,000 square foot facility and we have 40 full-time employees. So I am the mother of six children. And of course I was starting this company as I was having children. Those were very, very busy times. I would be with the kids all day and my kids are very close in age. I remember I was expecting my fourth child and I would go to the Mabel's Labels office at eight o'clock once everybody was in bed. And when I say office, I mean my sister's dingy basement. And I would make labels till 2 a.m. and then I'd go home and get up at 6 a.m., do the whole do with the kids again. And that was the that was the pattern. It was, it was pretty tricky. But it was a choice I made and I'm very happy with. Uh, being an entrepreneur, I always say I could never lie down with my kids. All my friends would lie down with their kids and read to them in bed. I couldn't do that. I couldn't risk falling asleep and losing three hours or four hours every night when I was supposed to get my work done. A big, huge money-saving tip I have is actually to invest in labels. Mm -hmm. um, I have this motto this year that is that no hoodie or water bottle will be left behind this year because <laughs> honestly, luck. I've lost all of them. I would recommend, I would highly recommend, in fact, that if you're starting a company and you have some budget, I would get some help with PR because PR is super important for a few reasons. Um, your PR person is the one with the contacts. They're only as good as their contacts and they have them and you don't, so that's helpful. When there's some PR around your company, whether it's in a magazine or whether it's an influencer talking about it on their blog or whether it's on TV, it comes with a sense of it's a testimonial. Whereas an advertisement is not a testimonial, it's 
you paying for an ad. And that I find with our market, they don't trust that so much. Moms don't trust traditional advertising. They trust testimonials and they trust their influencers. So going through PR rather than traditional advertising has been more effective for us. I always say social media, don't use it as a sales tool and it will become one. But the minute you start using it as a sales tool, it's gross, nobody wants a part of you, they will disengage, they will unfollow. So just use it to stay engaged with your community, to bring on new customers, to meet other people who are talking about the things that interest you. That's the most important thing. Give, 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 and, and then take. Now most kids are back in school and Sadie Murray, the go-to girlfriend, is back. She's going to show us some things that they're going to want in their backpacks and their lockers. Right up here are Mabel's labels. It's so great and convenient to, you know, customize your kids' clothing or their backpacks, These their books. Stickers. They're cute stickers. You can order them online. Mabel's Labels has those, and I actually, I like them for my stuff. We at Mabel's Labels have always worked with influencers. We were doing blogger outreach and working with bloggers before other brands even knew what the word blogger meant. There are a lot of ways to do that. And don't be fooled, for those small influencers out there, don't be fooled thinking brands don't want to work with you. Because there's the rise of the micro-influencer, and we we see some of these influencers that, that have huge followings. And brands are starting to catch on that sometimes they bought these followers, and sometimes they have a huge following but very little engagement. We'd almost rather work with somebody with a small following with huge engagement. That's important to us. Julie and her sister and two friends started Mabel's Labels out of a basement. She's a syndicated blogger uh, and a PR branding guru. And Mabel's Labels has been on Rachel Ray, The View, The Early Show, uh, and The Marilyn Dennis Show, which is amazing. So not only this, she has six children. Please help me welcome Julie Cool. Whenever I get my intro, I realize that's why I'm so stinking tired all the time. <laughs> It's interesting when you talk about personal branding. Um, I remember once I went, it was probably the moment I realized I had a personal brand because somebody said to me, oh, Julie, I just love your brand. I'm like, oh, I know Mabel, she's the best. She's like this awesome company that makes the labels. It's creative, it's vibrant, it does all this. And they're like, no, 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 I mean your brand. And I was like, what do you mean my brand? They're like, Julie Cole, the brand, you know, busy mom of six, entrepreneur, autism mom, like mom with, mom of many. And they started talking about all the things that I represent. And I thought, isn't that interesting? And isn't it funny how my personal brand is important to our customer community? And I think what people need to realize um, now is that Having a personal brand with your business is what's going to differentiate you from your competitors. Being kind of the celebrity CEO is what's gonna differentiate you and it's gonna bring connections. And connections bring loyalty and loyalty brings sales. There are a couple of ways to try and get your product in the hands of celebrities. Some are just basically like cold calls. Like we would in the old day make labels and send them to Oprah all the time. If we could get onto Oprah's favorite things, then she canceled. Um, so doing that, just sending stuff out and, and hoping, fingers crossed. Uh, then sometimes your PR people, if you have a good PR rep, they might have a connection or they might know somebody who has a connection to some celebrities to get their product in the hands. Or you can work through an organization that does that. We use one in California called Jewels and Pinstripes and they are a celebrity gifting organization and they get it into the celebrities' hands or in the gifting suites at conferences or at the you know, Emmy Awards or whatever, those award ceremonies, there's often gift bags, so there's ways of reaching them there too. So if you can reach out to a celebrity gifting organization, it's worth doing, it has been for us. There's really so much advice to give to somebody who's starting a business. A couple of things really I would say is you just gotta be really fierce. You've gotta have an appetite for risk. If you're risk adverse, you're gonna have a really hard time with this because you're taking chances all the time. Even once you launch, you know, the business grows and then you have to take more chances. And as soon as you get comfortable, you have to get uncomfortable again. I, I always say just get comfortable with being uncomfortable because you get used to where your company's at and then, and then it changes again. You know what, I really love that point that she makes about if you're gonna be successful, you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because I think 
I know that's something that I struggle with and I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. You're kind of thinking when I get to this point, I can relax and you realize if you keep growing, you never get to relax. That's kind of the part of the process. Yeah, so true. And I think for me, it really struck home when she talked about um, having kids and feeling guilty, um, being a mum. Sometimes you do feel really guilty and I think sometimes it's a wasted emotion. You just have to go out there and you have to just do it and uh, it works out for everybody. Yeah, it makes sense. We'd actually, we'd love to know what part of this resonated with you. What can you relate to? Leave a comment because we always do love your feedback. See you next time.